welcome. Today is the 23rd of April 2018. It's been a, a while since uh, I last did a video going to the football. I think it was uh, the end of January. So it was quite, quite a gap. Uh, I'll tell you where I've been when we get to the end of the van journey. Basically, it's got a very long story short, I've not been able to go to any football matches on a Saturday, on a Sabbath. Before Christmas all the, the football matches, because we were in Europe, were a Thursday and a Sunday, so it didn't really make a difference, there was the, the odd one or two that I had to miss, but since then, it's been, every one of them has been a Saturday since, since the last game, and there was literally nothing that I could do, I just couldn't, couldn't go to them, so I had to miss every one of those football games, so, like I was saying, today, it's the 23rd of April and it's Everton against Newcastle and it's uh, a Monday and it's an 8 o'clock kickoff. Originally this game was scheduled for a Saturday so I couldn't go to it so I put my uh, tickets on StubHub, sold them and then what happened last minute they changed it to a Monday so I decided to go but I had to change my seats and buy some different seats on the up and um, what that means is I've had to go early because I've got to go and collect the tickets from um, from outside the ground, well, well at, at the ground, you can could, you could only do it a few hours before kickoff. so it's going to be a slightly different video today because I've had to go down early, but uh, again, I'll explain that as we're walking around. As regards to, um, to to the football teams at the fall, Newcastle are coming into the game, having won the last four games. And obviously, well, some people might not know, but Newcastle were relegated and they were promoted last season. And their manager is Liverpool's former manager, Rafa Benitez, and he's, he's a quality manager. He's a really good manager. The only reason why I won't want him as Everton manager, obviously, is because he's a former Reds manager. But, you know, take nothing away from him, he's a very, very good manager. And uh, the owner of Newcastle, he's a bit of uh, eccentric, is the only way that it could be described. And he wants to sell the club at the moment, and he just refuses to invest in any serious money in the playing squad. Rafa Benitez has had a, a, a seriously small budget compared to the rest of the teams around him and uh, he's still managed to do a really, really good job with players. If you were looking at it, you wouldn't expect him to do as well as he'd done. You know, if, if he didn't have Rafa Benitez, he probably would have got relegated and gone back down. That's just my opinion. But all those players on paper performed massively compared to, to, to everyone around them, especially when you consider the amount of money that we've been spending on our players. Everton at the moment, under Big Sam, obviously last time I did the video I wasn't singing his praises and uh, I'll, just, I'll just do an assessment of where I think we're at at the moment. Like, obviously the last video I was saying that him to go. I didn't think he was uh, very good for the club in the long term. Didn't like his playing style. And away from home, our results have been poor. And away from home, he likes to go for a draw. Even if it's against the lower team, it's like when we went to Swansea, he classified getting a draw against Swansea was, was a good result, it was a good point, he said. And I think it was two points dropped. And the amount of money that we put in, and, and the club of our stature, considering we're the fourth most successful team in league history, we need to be going into every game to win it, no matter who it is. And we're not doing that. And the problem with that is giving us is that sometimes. Or scrape, scrape a victory and nick a victory, or, or like you know, 
keep it dead tight and, and get a draw but a lot of the times we don't get the results against the lower teams that we would actually expect just one second into the garage at some point and it's got this paper paper mat that was uh, just annoying me anyway I thought it might be messing up the sound I didn't want that rattling around we, but yeah his tactics away from home just ain't brilliant at all we're not we're not really going for it at all at home the brand of football that we're playing it's not the best is it? it's not good football it's not football that you want to watch and that's part of the reason why all our games have been on a Saturday because they're not wanting to put them on TV because they're not, they're not exciting games you know, you know I was meant to be going to, to, to the Merseyside Derby because that was scheduled on a Sunday and they changed that to a Saturday but obviously that, that, that was a nil-nil draw wasn't it with the, with the players at his disposal tactics that he's playing it just doesn't inspire me with confidence and at the moment the owner of our club he's bought the club he's paid a massive amount of money for it he's pumped transfer funds in like we've never had before we've broken our wage structure but before we always acted with class like we did things in the proper way and I just think you know like things like sending that fan survey out to rate his performance out of 10 it's just it's not it's not something you'd expect our club to be doing I expect us to get rid of it we don't need to be you know doing stuff like that as an excuse to get to get rid of him the writing's on the wall for him he already knows that he's in essence a dead man walking the, the right manager comes along we, we, we're gonna we're gonna try and buy him Try and try and sign him, but it's just not a classy thing to do, is it? It's not. It's not very good. In hindsight, we shouldn't have replaced Royal Cumin with Big Sam. We should never have got rid of him. If we didn't have someone absolutely concrete lined up, we should never have got rid of him. And in hindsight, now knowing what we know, and I know hindsight is a very easy, easy thing to. Uh, to use but we should never have got rid of Roberto Martinez look at now he's, he's a Belgian manager I know he wasn't the first choice but he is a Belgian manager and he could win the World Cup he could go win the World Cup but he's you know he's, he's walked into you know a, a really good job playing with good players and the brand of football that we played under Roberto Martinez it was good to watch I enjoyed the games it was end to end he had a clear philosophy of what he wanted to do. He had his weaknesses, don't get me wrong, but on the budget that he had, he was working on like a five million pound budget a year. And like if he'd been given a chance, he had, had a decent amount of money. But he was never given that chance, was he? Then we had to, we had to pay 10 million pounds to get rid of him. Uh, we've had to pay 10 million pounds to get rid of Ronald Koeman. And Steve Walsh, Steve Walsh is a disaster, isn't it? We're looking to replace him. The players that we've signed, the fact that we've not given give, um, Davy Clarkson a chance since September, the fact that we signed so many number tens, it's just, it's just ridiculous. It's just, it's just ridiculous. And like I said, the guy, our owner, fair play to him for putting a load of money in. But he's not organisation like we haven't got the right structure of the club. And nowadays, before you could spend, 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 and it'd get you a, a reasonable degree of success. But that isn't the case now. You have to spend sensibly, you have to spend intelligently. And that's what Everton are not doing. We've not spent intelligently, we've not invested intelligently, and we've just gone. Yeah, we'll just pump money into it and it'll work when it's not, has it? And the football that we're playing at the moment, from a spectator point of view, is shockingly bad. I know that we've got the magic 40 points, both 40 points, but we'll be safe. It'll be 
before our dads came in, we weren't safe. You know what I mean? But even his appointment, when we got, got him all in sort of five weeks, he even ruled himself out as being Everton manager because he, he'd already worked out we didn't want him. And then as an absolute emergency, we decided to get him. And when he came in, he was talking about how he was going to be forward thinking and, and like, like this was the biggest club he'd ever been to and, and no more of this negative football because he actually got money to spend from the right quality place. But it's not as he's not. He's still reverting to his old ways. And I remember when the big Sam was Bolton manager and he got him into Europe and they had to sign Nicholas and Alka. And in those days, it worked, you know what I mean? It was doable. Football has moved on since then. And as, as, as the Arsenal managers found, found out, as, as David Moyes, as he's found out, those were good managers back in the day, but now football's moved on. Even even look at Jose Mourinho. Like, you can't compete with Manchester City, even though they've got similar... Similar money to spend, obviously City, you've got more money to spend, but Pep Guardiola, he's like a different level of manager, isn't he? He's, he's taken it to the next level, and uh, every time football moves on, the people that don't move on get left behind, the people like Sam, Sam Allardyce, from an era of 10 years ago, where they're never going to, we're never going to finish more than seven for Big Sam, are we? No, no matter how we spend, because we're always going to be playing very defensively, trying to nick a goal. And away from home, he's happy with a point. And that isn't going to win. It's not going to win the league. It's not going to get to top four. You know, it's not going to give us what we need to do. So, anyway, that's that's the, the big Sam Allardyce analogy. Um, as regards to the team and what we're going to play tonight. I don't know who's going to play. Because I've not really been in the loop. So it's, uh, it's a bit up in the air. Um, like I said, it's my first game you know, in a while. Like when I, last, last time I was playing, went to watch a game, that new guy up front, he was on the bench. So it's, this is the first time that I've seen him play. Um, yeah, but it's, it's a game should be winning but football is on paper is it it's played on a pitch and at the moment Newcastle are in form players are motivated they're away from home but it's gonna be, it could be a tough game it's one of those where you know I'm not gonna say there's nothing to play for because there is plenty to play for we're playing for the league positions and the league positions at the moment they mean a lot don't they because just a couple of places difference where you finish in the league can be <coughs> millions of pounds, millions and millions of pounds so you're playing for, for a lot of money. I don't think we're going to qualify for Europe, it's, I'm not sure if it's still possible, but we're not, we're not our way. Maybe we could finish above Leicester, but ideally we'd be looking to consolidate where we are at the moment. And we, have, we haven't really got that much more to play for besides that, besides pride. And, uh, just about sums our season up, but at least, at least we're not at the bottom of the table. At least we're not about to get relegated. And before Christmas, in November, October, the way that we were playing football, leaking goals, and had no confidence in scoring, then you felt that, you know, that we could have got relegated. So he's come in big up, big Sam Allardyce, he's done a job. It was time for him to go, isn't it? Who now, like I was saying, we need to get the right appointments, but do it in a classy way. Not do it in this underhanded way. It's like we just need to be straight. But like I said, he, he already knows himself. got his big payoff. He doesn't care. I've 
watched a few couple of his, his interviews after games. And they just don't don't fill me with any confidence at all. It's like reading between the lines. You can tell that he knows that he's going, that he doesn't care, and he's calling good performances, bad performance. He's calling bad performances, good performances, and like. It's not. It's not the way that we should be playing football. We shouldn't be. Being, we shouldn't be really defensive and then just hoping to make a goal. It's, it's just not what we should be doing. Anyway, so if you've not watched one of these videos before, if it's your first time. We're going to do a full match day experience of going down to Goodison Park and to show you what it's like from a fan's perspective. To, to watch the game, like it's a lot different to watching it on TV, and just to give you the as much atmosphere what, as possible to see what it's like as, as a fan to, to, to go and watch the game. Going to do a tour around the ground, do like a commentary throughout the game, do a half time report, full time report. Just tell you my thoughts as, as we're going, going along, keep the camera rolling and uh, try and make it like you're here without actually being here. Like you're saying at the start of the video, let's negotiate this round about. Normally I sit I'm quite close to the uh, pitch. I sold those, sold those tickets, so we're a little bit further back today. But to go and get the tickets, we have to go and queue up outside the ground. So we do a slightly different rub down than how we normally do it. So normally we start for the problem seller and then walk around the ground. But that'll be slightly, slightly different today. Anyway. If you've not subscribed already, please subscribe. Hit the uh, hit the notification bell as well to uh, be notified when there's new videos. And don't forget to uh, give the video a like and uh, leave me a comment. And what we'll do is we'll pick it up once I pack it up, and I'll explain properly why I've not been able to go to the last uh, few games. Right. So we've arrived there, packed up. I just wanted to give a quick explanation of where I've been and why I've not been uploading any videos. Like if you'd watched the, the videos at the beginning of the season, um, I was going to the football on a Saturday, the Sabbath no problem, because my understanding of the Sabbath at that point was that it was just a day of rest where it meant you didn't do any work, so you didn't do, didn't do anything that involved you making a living. So it, that, that was fine, the football, I could go to the football. And then in October, what I found out was that you can't make anybody else work. And what that meant is that, that going to the football was ruled out because it was making other people work on, on the Sabbath. So that's that's the reason why I couldn't, couldn't you, you can't buy and sell on the Sabbath. So I couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't go to the shop or do, do anything that makes any, any anybody anybody work. So that's why, that's why I had to stop. Um, going, and it's just been a learning process for me of um, following God's commands and what I need to do because I've been going along because I knew that I needed to follow God's commands. I just um, wasn't entirely sure how to do it properly, and that's what studies have involved of finding out how to properly follow God's commands and, uh, and do it properly. So that's the reason why I've not been doing anything on the Sabbath besides um, resting and um, studying. So uh, there we go. Anyway, so um, we're going to uh, start it. Right, so we've arrived. It's uh, 20 past 6. It's an 8 o'clock kickoff. And uh, really early today. So there's nobody walking down. And the reason is because I've got a long queue up to get these tickets. So it slightly changed the way that we do it. Because there's no point in doing a big tour of the ground at the start on empty roads, is there? So the plan is to go. I'm going to go and get some chocolate today. And then we're going to go to the ground do highlights as we go into the ground, get my tickets, and then once I've got my tickets, 
It'll be about seven o'clock and then we'll do the proper tour after that. We'll have a proper walk around, but we'll start off from a different point to normal. So we'll pick it up this way. We're going to go for a crunchy. Boost. The RQ raisin biscuit. I think that's it. Right, so this is where we normally pick up filming. But as you can see, because it was so early, there's nobody properly like here yet. So it's pointless starting filming yet. You get to the ground, get ready. It was 22 7, so it's still an hour and 20 minutes before kickoff. That's where we're at at the moment. Still very quiet. Right, so, uh, got my tickets. Definitely early. My dog's loving it. This is the other end, a bit that we don't normally see. Williams Road end, this is the, where the away fans will be coming in today. There's not many people trickling in at the moment. I think what I'm going to do is go and get something to eat. Because it's still, it's still like an hour before kickoff. And, uh, but at least, I've, at least I've got my tickets. <laughs> I decided what I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to do a little tour of the ground while it's really quiet. We'll actually walk fully around while, while we can. So this is the Bullions Road and this is the away fans. Like Normally I sit that way. So that's, that's the road. And it's just, just on the other side, that's where I sit, so this is the opposite way. Where I'm from. <laughs> Normally it's packed. It's proper hard to do it. But if you've never been to the ground, imagine you were. I thought it was quite interesting. It's on this side, right? Go right the way Ninety forty eight seventy eight thousand two hundred and ninety nine. The reason why it's uh, half that at the moment is because it's standing. We were standing back then. It's all seated now. <laughs> I bet it was a good day that day. Proper cramps inside Boynes Road. You can tell it's a hundred year old stadium when you go in there and the toilets is just an afterthought. It's literally like you're in a sardine can. There is Big Dunk, the man himself. That's the last time we won some silverware.
So that's where I got my tickets from. I was having a practice with my Zoom because I've not been using it for it for, for months ever. Gladys Street now. We've been down here plenty of times, but never when it's been this quiet. to the gym today. Every muscle in my body is aching. It is killing me to lift this camera up. Yeah. Oh, good stuff, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Some little lad watching my videos. Takeaway. Smells nice. Right, so this is the bit obviously we've seen this bit before. This is where we normally hit the main street. A few more people now. It's still about an hour from kickoff. So I'm gonna try and get something to eat. Okay, so I've ended up in KFC, this is a chicken fillet box meal. That's what it looks like. Alright, so that's the, the KFC polished off. Most of it's in my just my KFC. Wash my moustache in the toilet. I feel uh, fully refreshed now, I needed that. I've been walking around here, I've been surprised by the amount of people that come up and said hello. Basically, all the people that let on to me, I forget how many people have watched these videos sometimes. So, if you've came, come and said hello, I'd really appreciate that. So, as you can see, it's uh, busy now. It's 25 to 8. 25 minutes to kick off time. I was speaking to a program seller down here. Picked up the program already, and uh, we were saying that there might be some protests about Big Sam today. 
apparently the fans are at the end of the tether. Are you going to bring the placards in or something? I don't know, you were saying that you were trying to organise something, so we'll see if that comes to you. If you comes true. A few very exotic smells walking down there. Don't know if you noticed in the van, but got a sunburn all over my face, all over my arms. Past couple of days, it's been like Caribbean weather. It's sort of been unbelievably warm for it from mid April. You know, but today it's back to 11 degrees. I've been out in the sun enjoying it. So much so that I got burnt. So, not a dirty bulk, but I have been eating one or two little bits of uh, food that previously I wouldn't have eaten. I 
just have to be careful, it's fun zone music, so I don't want it to be commercial music playing through the speakers. And I'll uh, run the risk of getting my video plugged up for music copyright. When we actually uh, just one second, let me just check what, what that, what's going on over there. I right, checked, fan zone's finished and they were playing commercial music, so yeah, speed on it. <laughs> First disabled lift they build in a pair of member off the top of my head. I think they put the statue outside as well. I wonder if they'll take it to the new stadium. <coughs> that seemed leaving it outside. Uh, I'll probably check my bag because uh, it's jam packed. It's got chocolate, and chicken, all kinds of stuff in it. Newcastle United, 26 Carl Barlow, 2 Kieran Clark, 7 Jacob Murphy, 9 Dwight Gale, 14 Isaac Hayden, 19 Avio Macquillo, and 23 Mikel Moreno. Now for the mighty Blues of Everton, we line up as follows. In goal, number one, Jordan Pitford. 
Tom Davis, 29, Dominic Calvert Louis, and 54, Benny Benigni. Our referee tonight is Mr. Bobby Madley. Alright, I'll pick you all properly. Uh, let's kick off and show you as much as you can. It might be a bit different. We sit in a different place. But We've got a bit of free kick here, we've not really done much, we've had a few sporadic attacks. Rooney's playing directly behind the striker. Glass has made a few good runs. We've not put him under much real, real pressure. Definitely a little bit harder to film this all the way. Don't know why we're used to it. It was alright, it was half decent. It's a little bit of foul, that. Huh? It's really got booked for it as well. Off with a warning. Oh. Oh. That was an alright attack, that. Awesome. So we're like 20 minutes in at the moment. We've not really created many chances. Quite static up front. Players, when they get the ball, they run with it. Other players, they're not moving with them. It's a bit strange. Newcastle haven't really threatened much. But we've not had any real clear cut opportunities. Newcastle are quite happy to, to sit deep, keep it tight. And look for that counter attack. That's definitely what we're looking for. Newcastle fans are making a lot of noise. There's nothing, nothing really to write home about. Free kick, see what we can do on this. Quite narrow games being played in the middle of the park. Enough we really came off that free kick. You're booing Jordan Pickford because he used to play for Sunderland. I don't play him one up front. There's not, not a lot of movement. Could have done better with that ball. This is what Newcastle are looking for. It's a break. Trying to throw in. Let's see what we can do off this. Oh, 
face too. Sachs coming down left, unless he's cutting in quite in field. We've got Coleman and Walcott down the right hand side, and we're not using them enough. Coleman's pushing right up front, we're just not getting the ball to him. He still, he still doesn't look right. He's never been right since that injury. Newcastle think it's quite funny that we've got Sam Allardyce as a manager. We just keep giving the ball away so cheap, especially in the final 18 yard box, final third. Just look like we've got no confidence. I'll tell you what, the lassie, he doesn't do much for saying he's paid, he was a 25 million pound man. I know he was injured for a long time, but he gets the ball and it's just like he doesn't. He doesn't know what to do with it, he doesn't, he doesn't have a clue, he doesn't make the right runs, he doesn't pick the right people out, when he, when he should dribble he passes it, when he should dribble, when he should pass it, he doesn't. Just, uh, Rooney's dropped deep, he's good cross, chasing the ball, our strikers started making a few decent runs. He's just not got enough support. Walcott and Coleman down, down the right hand side, they're getting forward. They're just not getting enough service. And when we do get into the final 18 yard box, we just we give it away cheap, real cheap. And we've got height in our team here. Allardyce has been armed for his set pieces. We should we should do something with this. But have Baines taking it and not ruining it. I'd still prefer him in the box. Come on, lad! He should have done better with that. in the corner again. Like I said, you've got some big players in the box. He does float it in nice though. We're a physical team though, Newcastle. Whenever we launch you forward, you just slightly touch the player in the back, just knocks him off. I'll tell you what. Newcastle won a score on the counter attack. I'll tell you what, sell the last hit. Cash in for him while we can still get some for him. He just makes such bad decisions. Thank 
kick. I don't know why Baines has been taking off free kick duties. Rooney's taking them all. Good cross. Organised Newcastle. We should be doing a bit better over on. Shame it didn't drop for him that. It's been a very uneventful first half of 41 minutes. The goal there would change everything. I certainly don't want to concede one though. Draw. But, um, 
know, Newcastle always front on the counter attack. We've had those chances. Like our striker, he's not, he's not really had many chances at all. He's just, he's just been half chances, you know, scraps. But he could do all right if he gets the right, the right service into him. He's just not being fed the right balls. Rooney's taking too many free kicks and like like Lassie I'd take him off. It's just a, just a waste of space. Anyway, what we'll do is we'll put through the programme and hopefully it'll be this is the uh, everyone against Newcastle match program, we'll just have a quick flip through it. Oh, I messed that up there, didn't I? Much in that the last day's match, bro. Speaking to a guy at half time for a proper good shot of him. The same, pretty much the same as me. But we've not made any substitutions. But I got so carried away talking with him that I thought eating my chicken. I had one chocolate bar in the first half. I'm gonna have another one. I went to eat my drifter and realised that I didn't get a drifter. So, uh, so I couldn't eat no drifter. I think what we need to do, if I was manager, I'd take Blasi off and I'd take one of the central midfielders off. I don't think we need two defensive central midfielders in this game. And I'd bring a striker on, Calvin Lowen, play two up front, and just try and put Newcastle defence under more pressure. But we've just not been taking our chances, not been creating a lot. And our striker has been feeding on scraps. The Newcastle, they don't, they don't stop. They're very well organised. The fans are behind them. The fans are making good noise. We just need to believe in ourselves a little bit more. Hopefully we'll get an early goal in the second half and it'll pick up. training ground only. Luckily that guy can't shoot. Oh, 
Send it to conceded, but you've actually been better in the second half, Newcastle Pitts, Newcastle Earth. Blessing in disguise, Snidling getting injured, Tom Davies coming on. Actually, go on to like left hand side playing rather than playing to 4 4 2, but you never know. We normally take Rooney off around about this time, don't we? But we've already made two substitutions now. I 
how did he miss that? No wonder he's banging the floor. That's a lot of that. He could have scored. Can you jog your Alka's taking it? Spider-Man arms, the arms, the all over the player's shirts. They make sure they do it out of view of the ref. The referee's been very lenient with it as well. Just that little push to put the player off. Or when he's about to jump, he just grabs the shirt. Effective, it puts us off. We don't want them to score though. If we keep giving them chances, they will score. We're not giving our striker enough chances. There's always two players on him. Sometimes more. Well, the second half's a lot better than the first half, anyway. Starting to knock on the door, Newcastle. Newcastle, they look like they're going to score. <laughs> Needs to be on the ball for this one. We've moved Dominic Calvert Lewin to the right. We feel Walcott down the left, but it's just not worked for us. He's so effective down the right hand side, Walcott, but he's just he's just not getting much much action at all down the left. Rooney's dropped deep now. We're on 75 minutes. Tom Davis is like playing behind the striker. We're just not creating any, any chances. Substitution for Newcastle. Coming up number 11, Matt Ritchie. To be replaced by number 7, Jacob Murphy. So that's Newcastle's second substitution. Obviously making changes to try and win the game. Well, to try and score. Giving it away cheap like that one. Waste the chance. 
keep giving it away very cheap. We're inviting Newcastle onto us. Too many chances. If they had a better quality striker, a lot more better quality forwards. Could have scored. That was quite a high four. Another corner. That's quite funny. <laughs> Look at the claws as well. So the ass has come on Tosin. We're in the last five minutes. The token substitution. Keep it tight. Get the victory. Three points is the most important thing now. We don't want to mess it up. But we are giving Newcastle something to fight for. Free kick. He's on a yellow card. Quite a dangerous thing to do. We can't keep giving him these opportunities though. Goal on the counter attack with the nice. Final minute, final two minutes. Second half's been a lot better than the first half, entertainment wise. But I'd say we played worse. We give Newcastle so many opportunities to score. We must be scratching their heads on how they don't score. Realistically, they should have done with the amount of chances that they had. But we've created very little in the second half ourselves. It has been more end to end, it has been better to watch. Too deep. He's still knocking on the door. What are they doing? The four positions indicated the will be a member of five minutes additional time. It's going to have to serve it in. At least the yellow. Give him a good push.
Five minutes of stoppage time, Zach. Certainly not giving up Newcastle. Oh, it's right at the end now, must be a minute left. Right at the end, we're still hanging out with the death again. Oh wow, did he not score that? Unbelievable. It must be in the fourth minute of five. This has got to be their last attack. Victory considering Newcastle put the pressure on at the end. Really was turning to screw. I don't know how he can score. Oh. Yeah, I've had my hair cut. I don't know if you've noticed, it's a bit shorter than it normally is. But I think it's going to have to go even shorter. I'm not sure it's uh, biblical. I keep uh, getting convicted about my hair being too long. So it might be the last time that it's this length. But, um, you know, five minutes of injury time, right at the end, they hardly they didn't score Newcastle. I don't know, they'll be kicking themselves that, that you didn't at least get a draw. You know, like, performance in the, half, in the second half. We didn't create a lot of chances. <laughs> uh, Newcastle created loads of chances. And it wasn't a very good game of football to watch from an Everton fan, but we won, that's the important thing. We got the three points, I don't know how close that takes us to Leicester. But it was a good win. Probably a bad performance. But what we'll do... People as uh, we leave it. What we'll do, we'll do a full, proper analogy. Once get into the van. On the way home. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll be picking up See you back in the van. We won. One nil. Happy days. And I tell you what, we worked hard for it at the end. We proper hung on. And uh, what I realised was how much I've missed going to the football. And how much I enjoyed it tonight and what a good time I had. And, uh, obviously. There's no getting away from the fact that I can't go on the Sabbath. But today, I really, really enjoyed it. The next game that I can definitely go to on a Sunday is the last game of the season. So we're definitely going to that one. And if there's uh, any more games that fall that ain't on the Sabbath, we're going to them as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Walcott's goal was a good goal, well taken, we needed it. When he moved to the left hand side, he wasn't as effective in the second half. You know, we just, we were so wide open. Newcastle got chance after chance after chance, and how they didn't score, I don't know. If they, they had a more expensively assembled team with better quality players. They would have scored. There's, there's no doubt about it. You know, maybe on a, any other night they would have scored, but we just got lucky. We got football. It was 
if it was in our favour tonight, there was uh, no doubt about it. It was just put this last on us, so we could clear the, uh, clear the window. start the last scene in that first half he just he just ran around like headless chicken I've never known nothing like it every time he got the ball he made the wrong decision he just it's like he, he had no football brain no football intelligence and, and uh, all the good stuff was coming down the right hand side but we couldn't get the players into play they kept making the right moves but we just we just couldn't get the ball to him our striker was just feeding on scraps there was nothing that he could do marked out of the game in, in many respects but he wasn't getting a lot of support from uh, from Rooney from our other players he just wasn't being played in so it was not a big <laughs> he could have done better movement but he tried hard there's no doubt about it but he just he just didn't there was no clear cut chances, there's no points in the game where you thought, yeah, you should have definitely scored, you know, that it was laid upon a plate for him. But I suppose that's credit to Newcastle and the defender that they put in place and the organisational skills that they had. Newcastle fans, the support that they gave the team was first rate. First rate, and like, you never stopped singing. You did a little bit midway through the second half. And he'd gone one nil down, and they weren't singing as much, but like they were loud, they were vocal, and respect. You know, it's a long way from Newcastle to Liverpool, especially on a Monday night, and they filled both tiers, top and bottom. And not many teams do that on a, a midweek game. So you got the passionate fans. And, about that. Some of sat off to the right place. It's still wild. Uh, set for the ground. It's not that I don't know the way out, but if there's any traffic jams. Just guide me around it. Defensively, we were sound <laughs> to a certain extent, besides all the chances that they created. But Michael Keane, Phil Jagielka, Phil Jagielka were uh, quite solid. James Coleman had his usual strong game. Leighton Baines was doing all the right things. Tom Davies, when he came on, he kept giving the ball away a lot. moves. It just wasn't his game unfortunately for him I don't think. Just looking to see if that's a police van or uh, I don't know if it's just a normal van. kept giving it away a lot. He was trying real hard, but especially at the end where we should have just been keeping possession. The balls that we were playing just weren't coming off. Rooney knackered, knackered out towards the end. It's such an anomaly. Sometimes he plays really well. And we haven't got any players that have got that, that world-class skill in them, but he's just not got the legs anymore. And he drifts in and out of games. He's been given a free roll to go around do whatever he likes. I thought she was going to cut across me in that one. But he's got that magic where he can cut teams open and score a fantastic goal. His free kicks, they were, they were well, well placed and everything like that. He floated them in nice. And we, didn't, we didn't get much off it. I thought Bain should have had a more of a saying it. Schneiderlin had quite a solid game until he came off. We were probably better with him on, but when he went off, we were wide open. When, uh, after he went 
off way out of solid game Calvert-Lewin when he came on he made a few important tackles he moved on to the right hand side and played the right wing Theo Walcott moved to the left didn't really suit us it probably would have been better for us to go 4-4-2 four, four, and clump a few longer balls up put the team under pressure Newcastle team under pressure it just didn't happen for us but at the end of the day it wasn't a pretty victory and we could have easily conceded a goal and come away with a draw or worse. That's just the way it is in football sometimes, isn't it? It wasn't an amazing game to watch by any means. Particularly the first half and then like it was quite heavy to see stuff in the last 10 minutes, 20 minutes where it was just Newcastle attack after attack after attack, like I said in the game. Newcastle had a better calibre of players they could quite easily score a goal we were certainly creating the opportunities but all the players played for the manager Newcastle fans never stopped chanting the manager's name all the way through the game they clearly loved the guy glad they're staying in the Premier League they deserve it uh, considering Newcastle were on a, a run of games where they won the last four games in a row with good result Definitely. Uh, upwards and I think. What we need to do is sort Allardyce's position out so he knows what's happening. I know a lot of people were speaking to a guy at half time and he was saying that there were going to be protests after the game, we'll talk about protests being in the game, but we just need to do it in a classy way with dignity and whatever happens he's being well paid and if he, if he is sacked he'll get six million quid is this guy driving with no lights on there? yeah he's not got any lights on he's not looking to see who he is it's a lady I would want to run oh she's got a fog lights on and that's it she's got no real lights on Strange, and that's all the lights in the back of the gun. Don't know. But... Looks like she's just got a fog on. Yeah, I mean, she'd definitely get a pulled if you think to see her doing that. But anyway, if you like the video, don't forget to uh, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and turn the notifications on. I am going to try and do uh, a couple more videos that are non-football related. Uh, I'm thinking of going up to um, a couple of places in the Lake District. I forget the name of it. It's like England's highest mountain. I'm going to go for a bit of a trek up there and do a little bit of a documentary as I go up there, a little bit of a video log. Um, uh, there's a few other little videos that I've got planned that I've just been doing research for but I've just not had time to do yet because I've been extremely busy. It's going to be a late night tonight, whenever I do these football videos, it'll be like half ten, quarter to eleven by the time I get home, by the time it's uploaded onto YouTube, I've done it, it's like half four, five in the morning, and recently, I've been getting up at five in the morning, and I've been in the gym for half past six, so it'd be a bit of a weird one to uh, still be up at five in the morning, and still just getting up, probably not the whole routine off for tomorrow, but like I said, it's been worth it, I've enjoyed coming, I'm glad that I've come. Bit of me because I've not been for such a long time before. Is it even worth going filming it? Just, just because I've got out of the run, out of the sequence of uh, me coming and filming it. Uh, like I said, I'm glad I did it. I had a, I had a great time. I really enjoyed it. It'd be better to sit back in my old seats next time. I was a bit worried that, uh, that I'd sold my seats, but I'd already sold them and then they moved the game. I saw the people that had bought my tickets. You don't, you don't, they, they, they buy them anonymously, anonymously or uh, stuff up, but obviously I could see who was sat in my seat, so it was quite interesting. Anyway, like I said, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you really soon, take care.